How hard can replacing a ball screw be? I'm the CNC repairman. I'm going to show you how the Niagara Falls is full of hard. Hello, I'm the CNC repairman. This ball screw sounds pretty bad. It's actually out of a machine because we threw the machine away. But your machine is still running, still in your garage, and you may want to work on your machine. Well, you may not want to work on it, and you're here watching this video. So if you have to replace the ball screw, you have to replace the end bearing, the thrust bearing, the coupling, the motor, you need any parts, you need anything, check out CNC Replacement Parts. That's my web store. That's where I go put stuff to make it easy for you. The tools, the parts, consumables, overnight shipping, whatever you need to fix your machine. So let's get to it. If you need to take one of these out of your machine, it's far easier with the right tools. Now I'll show you how to do it without, because I've done it for a long time without in the field. And that may be what you need to do, but if you want to have a little easier process, you can get the right tools from us. This is a smaller 30 tool, 32 millimeter ball screw, ball screw tool, and there's the end cap tool, and you can get the larger 40 millimeter one. So, how do you use it? Let's talk about how this sits in the machine. Move some of this out of the way. This sits in the machine like that. This is your thrust bearing. There's two angular contact bearings inside of here, and the preload is set at the factory when they tighten this inside. Now, I have twice successfully unscrewed these and replaced the angular contact bearings. Pain in the neck. I mean, I had to heat the thing up and build a tool. I just think it's not really worth the effort. The end roller bearing has a nut. This one shouldn't be tight. So, let's just pretend this is all together. I'm gonna turn this up so you can see. I don't think it'll affect anything. Hey, can you see better now? So, this is a smaller ball screw, and it's what would be on like a VF2, VF3 small lathe. Just imagine that's all the way in here. Maybe I can get it. It's tight. Okay, so all together, coupling motor. Got a video about how to pull this stuff apart on our channel. So, pretend the motor's off, the coupling's out. Now, I didn't find a small nut in our shop, so I'm gonna pretend this one's small. This one's on there, and there's one on this end. I think I only have one. One on this end. The lock tool has two pins and this dowel pin up here that allows you to lock the ball screw. I'm gonna flip it around so you can see. This fits right inside of here. Uh, almost. Can't see anything. Just believe me. It, it totally locks in there. We'll try to rotate it around. Ah, like that. Now I can't turn the ball screw. So, ball screw end is tight. There's a nut on this side. You take this tool and you stick your ratchet on it and you can crack it loose. Now, if you don't have this tool, an aluminum or brass punch, boom, boom, you've got to loosen up the little clamp screw and you can pop them loose and you can get them tight enough that way. Once or twice I've overdone it and I've totally just busted this in half. It's worth having another one of these on hand if you're going to be working on your ball screw, either replacing the bearings or replacing the screw. So easier with the right tools, doable without. If you, let's, so if you have the tools, you put that in there, you pop this off, then you're good to go. Come over here to this end, unscrew the clamp screw, and this one you could just hit with a punch, or you could hit this and just quick pop loose. The weight of the table is gonna be on this yoke. The yoke would be flipped up, and, and it would pop off. And this shouldn't be tight. If this is too tight, you're stretching the screw, which on a more expensive machine tool you want to, but there's no angular contacts on this end, so you're literally just squeezing the outer race in and tightening everything up on this radial bearing down here. So don't over tighten this. So this one's off, that nut's off, then you can unscrew, see? You would unscrew screws in here that hold this bearing cartridge in show you. This slides over it pretty nice. It's tight fit. So nuts off, cartridges out. If we were to do a full disassembly, this would be out. You can pull this, but you don't have to. As soon as you pull 
this end nut off. Is it not? That was tight. I bet you if I hit it hard, it would pop out because this just sits in here. Then you can unscrew this, push it out a little bit, reach in from over here, pop all of these socket head screws off. You take the lube line off. I come in with a, a socket, take this off. I leave the lube line connected and there's an O-ring on the back side. So be careful that that O-ring comes with it, or doesn't stay. Then you unthread the nut all the way out to about here. And then because this is like this and this gap hole is larger, you can then go forward, drop it out, tilt it and pull the ball screw out. Replace the ball screw, have the ball screw rebuilt, do what you need to. Reverse order. Reverse order would be bearing in and then you would just snug these down a little bit, but if the table's all the way over, you can't really reach in there or get anything. So these are just touched snug, but it's over enough. Ball screw goes in, don't do anything on that end. Put this on, tighten this up, put this on, tighten this up. Then according to the real procedure, you'd put this on this end, tighten it a little bit, lock down this, put in the lock tool, then you'd tighten this to a specific torque spec, and then you'd pop this off, then you'd loosen this and set that to a torque spec. I've done a ton of ball screws. You want this end good and snug. You don't want to break it, you don't want to stretch the threads, but you want it good and snug. You know, every, the whole ball screw should be snugged up tight in here, then this should just be a little tight. I hope I didn't oversimplify it. Hope I didn't make it too complicated for you. I know I'm going quick, but I don't think anybody wants to hear me go uh, uh, on a long, long video. So if you need parts, if you need tools, two to 300% cheaper than the manufacturer, all of this stuff is available. There's really only two sizes of ball screw tools. I can just give you a quick measurement. This one's like 50 millimeter. That one's like 57. So the, the, the nuts themselves are pretty close in size, but you only have two and they, they won't work. They'll either fit the big one or fit the small one. Anything else you need, check out our parts store. Thanks for watching. Please tell our friends. Please leave a comment. If you really don't like the way I told you how to do this and you really think I don't know what I'm doing, then don't leave a comment. That'd be fine too. Take it easy. Come back and watch our video again. There's lots of videos. Your own ball screw. <laughs> what am I supposed to say? <laughs>